Today I'm going to show you how to produce in the style of Ed Sheeran. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the song that I produced with Sign Jan. I'll link to the song in the description. You guys should totally go check it out. We were very inspired by Ed Sheeran's bad habits when it first came out. And I think you'll be able to see some of that influence in this track. There's going to be a bunch of spooky EDM stuff, a bunch of complex layers and mixing. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before I jump into the track, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Seth. I work as a pop completion producer, meaning I specialize in taking artists' song ideas and turning them into finished tracks ready for Spotify. I I do one of these videos every Thursday to show people how to create their own pop music at home. Songs that I've produced and written in the past have been featured on these Spotify playlists, and I did an entire album through Warner Music Group. So if you have a pop song that you're really passionate about that's been burning a hole in your pocket for a while, check out the top link in the description and we can get started. Now jumping into the track. So like the previous episode I did where I showed you how to produce like Olivia Rodrigo, I did a separate mastering session for this. So this session doesn't sound exactly like the final version that got released, but I'll show you that at the end. And yeah, here's how it sounds. All right, let's start working through each of those elements. I'd say one of the main elements that is contributing to the song is this kick drum. By the way, everything is frozen because it's a lot of processing for this computer to handle. So we're just going into a basic channel strip here. I really like the channel strips in the Slate Virtual Mix Rack. They're very practical for a lot of situations. The main thing to know about this chain is we're boosting some of the highs here, and then we're doing some shimmer and some thickness on this revival drive. Doing a little bit of EQ here just to filter it up a bit and to get rid of some some of those higher frequencies and the sort of higher portion of the low end. I then use this transient master to give it a little bit more attack on that front end. Since this is an EDM style track, there's way more processing on this kick drum than I would normally use. But since it's such a prominent part of the track and everything else kind of ducks out of the way of it, it kind of needs to stand on its own. Used a little bit of R bass. Looks like I was boosting around the 140 range just to give it a little oomph. And then there's an auto filter here that's automated to turn down in certain sections. I'll group all these guys together and I'll show you what it's like on and off. So on, off, on. It just opens it up a bit more. So another special thing about this track is that I have this instruments group, which is literally all of the instruments except for the kick drum. And the reason that I have these guys separated here is because is because I have Soothe here and it's side chained to the main vocal. I want to go on the side. So you can see it's kind of pulling some of the main frequencies of the vocal out of the instrumental track, which is exactly what I wanted because I wanted the vocal to sort of sit on top of everything, but I didn't really want it to affect the kick drum. So I put the kick drum over here by itself. But then another reason why I did it is because with these EDM style tracks, I really like putting all of the drums in a group and then side chaining it to the kick. So all of the drums are gonna be ducking out of the way of that four on the floor. These guys don't really have any individual processing on them. 
except for it looks like there's a little bit of R base on this one snare track. I think that was just to boost that one fundamental of it. But yeah, there's a filter at the very beginning. Probably should have thrown it at the end. I didn't notice it and I didn't catch it in the mix. So it doesn't matter. Then yeah, a compressor here to sidechain this entire group to the kick drum. And then throwing on a little bit of JST clip on the 2X setting, boost it up quite a bit and then turning the trim down. And that mixed with a tiny bit of fresh air. These two together really make a percussion group stand out in the mix a lot more. Let me show you what it's like on and off. So off. On. They just kind of smile a bit more. We then have this separate group down here, which is all of the risers and claps. Let's look at these guys. So first we have this clap impact. Of course, using a little bit of wider from Infected Mushroom and Polyverse, just to give it a little bit more width. And then throwing wider on this Leno effects riser. And then blending that with this other riser. And then I've got these two crashes, which it looks like I did some high passing on them just to get rid of some of that low end. I normally high pass crashes as opposed to risers because in my mind, a riser is going to be sort of leading up to a drop. And in those moments, there's probably not gonna be a lot happening mix wise. Whereas the crashes themselves are gonna be probably hitting when the mix is the most dense. So it can kind of help to clean up the mix a bit if you high pass all that low end information out of them. Considering that normally with a crash, you're just trying to get the sort of high end excitement on that initial hit. But yeah, threw all these guys into a pre-1973 from Arturia, which is a really awesome 1073 style Neve preamp. Looks like I just high passed it and then boosted some of the top end to give it a little bit more excitement. With it on. Now with it off. Just cleans it up a little bit. We then have the bass track. Again, I've got this track divided into two halves, this sort of lower 808 and then this sort of higher octave version of it. I took the Sublab NASCAR 808 preset that I normally use, and I just took the 808, duplicated it on a separate track, transposed the MIDI up an octave, and then rendered that out as its own separate track. So you can sort of blend it in underneath it. And then as far as processing here, nothing too crazy. This is probably one of my favorite utility uses. Used utility here to make the bass mono. So if we listen to it, that's what it's cutting out right there. Or that's what it's making mono right there. So that whole frequency range is being made mono which really helps clean up a mix. Little bit of a filtering thing here. So yeah, I automated this high pass filter so that in the verses, it's up here in more of like the 80 Hertz range. Then gradually as it sort of gets down to the chorus, by that point it's in the 50 Hertz range, which is kind of a cool way to add dynamics to a bass. I then added some bass rider to sort of level it out. Added a couple of R bass modules to sort of get those higher harmonics. Max bass, I normally use this on the mastering chain, but I thought it would work here as well. This is just sort of a low end extender. Not really trying to add a much of excitement here, just trying to sort of make the bass a bit lower or at least make it feel lower. Slate virtual tape. And then on this song, I did my normal thing where I use Soothe and I side chain it to the fundamental of the kick. So the fundamental of the kick drum actually gets cut out of the sub every time the kick hits. But then I also used a tiny bit of just normal sidechain compression mixed with that because I felt like with this beat specifically, the kick really needed to take the prominent role. So I actually used a combination of soothe and sidechain compression because I really wanted to make sure that the kick drum was really taking the prominent role of the song. Here, I'll show you all of this processing without. So without. With. without with a little bit of weird volume jumping because of the bass rider plugin but you get what i'm talking about next we have these synthesizers that sound like this So these are the exact same patch just rendered out in different octaves so we have this lower one here then we have this higher octave of the same sound. 
Looks like I threw some more ROM reverb on this one and some H delay on a ping pong setting, specifically to make that higher octave a bit wider than the other one. And then just using some bus processing on these guys, the 1973 again, high passing it all the way up to 300. Cause for this song, we had a lot of guitars taking up a lot of room in the mix. And it looks like we were kind of cutting in that like 360 range, which is kind of muddy and then boosting the highs. We then mix that with a lot of fresh air because these guys needed to be bright, some wider to make it a bit wide, er, and then some one knob pumper to side chain it to the kick. Here's what it sounds like without all that stuff. Here's with. We then have these guitars here. Again, sort of doubling up on these octaves. To clarify, I, I don't recommend doing this guitar sound this way. This was just the way that I was able to find the sound that me and SideGen were looking for. So do not replicate this chain. But it was this uh, Guitar Rig 6 patch going into a pre-1973, going into a limiter, going into a small room reverb, going into OTT after that with some transient shaping and then some filtering for certain sections, all wrapped up with some chorus and some RC20. Now this is an absolute mess of a chain, but the reason that we came to this chain was we actually found a loop that we enjoyed, but it just didn't really have the sort of like melodic movement that we wanted. So I essentially replayed that loop but changed up the notes a lot and then did my best to replicate that chain on my actual guitar. It's basically this like lo-fi cavern thing that's super side-chained. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. Sometimes the song just needs whatever it needs. Then we have this lead line here which is really fun. It consists of these two piano guys which are from a contact library. I then have these two lead lines from a guitar doubling it up, which I then doubled up with some live acoustic guitars, then layered up again with an octave. I then blended all those guys together with some OTT, some L1, some ROM reverb, some one knob pumper, and some H delay to make it sort of spread in the stereo field. Here's without all those effects. Here's with. We then have this one vocal chop from an arcade loop. Again, I think I was just really into 1973 because I had just gotten it from Arturia. But yeah, same thing. High pass filter, boosted some of the highs, cut some of the muddy frequencies, some fresh air to make it stand out in the mix, and then some wider to make it wider. Baked into this audio track is actually like a fader automation thing that I did before I rendered it out as an audio file. So you can actually hear it transition into the chorus. It was just a way to dynamically bring in that part. And then the vocals are the last element here. There's some interesting things here. We have this main vox. Don't have to divide. We'll be by your side. I wanted to get some thickness on it though. So what I did was I duplicated that vocal and then added a little altar boy and shifted it down an octave. When friends don't have to divide. Just added some beef and thickness below it. And then I did the exact same thing only an octave up. So all three of those together make a sort of thick vocal without really adding another harmony part per se. When friends don't have to divide. We also have a whisper track here. Don't have to divide. Which I used just as a way to sort of add some more excitement on the top end of her vocal. And there were a couple of parts where I wanted there to be sort of like a call and response thing. So what I did was I duplicated her vocal again, threw some crazy effects on it with like micro shift and all this stuff. And it acts sort of as like a call and response thing in the pre-chorus. So let's get together. Let's get Time to waste. I want you. So hold me. 
the these guys here are literally just these exact same parts of the vocal just copy and pasted onto a new track moved to the side a little bit and was a little bit more drive and reverb but when you hear it in the context of the song it just fills everything out so much more Really happy with how those turned out. And yeah, that's everything in the track. Here, let me open up the mastering session real quick. So I realized last week I said that I was gonna start talking about each individual part of my vocal chain, and I didn't really do that. So I have my subtractive EQ, and then after that, I'm going into this bus force from Arturia, which I have set up to sort of filter out the high end and the low end and just focus on the mid range. And then I'm compressing it and blending it in a little bit. So the silence. And the self discovery, I really feel like a. So when I turn it off. So the silence and the self discovery, I really feel like alone was good to me. It can be kind of hard to hear, but if I really boost it up. So the silence and the self discovery, I really feel like alone was good to me. You can really hear it. But yeah, it can be a really effective way to bring in sort of a parallel compression vibe, similar to what you would do with like a rock drum kit, but you do it on the master bus. So yeah, I'll keep going through this master chain one piece at a time as uh, the series goes on. But yeah, now let's listen to the final result. But I think I'm ready to party again, celebrate with our friends, a different kind. So yeah, that's what the whole thing sounds like. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, the bell icon, all that stuff. You know how it works. Again, I do one of these videos every Thursday. If you want to see the last one that I did, check out this one where I show you how to produce in the style of Olivia Rodrigo. Hope you guys have a great week. See you next Thursday.